For the family of American hostage Abdurrahman, formerly Peter Kasig, it's a race against time. His mother Paula making a desperate plea, tweeting this message to his captor, ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. I am an old woman and Abdurrahman is my only child. My husband and I are on our own with no help from the government. We would like to talk to you. How can we reach you? A vain effort, perhaps, but filled with echoes of something her son said to us two years ago. There's this impression, this belief that there is no hope, you know. Um, that's when it's more important than ever that we come in against all odds and try to do something. We first met Peter Kasig the summer of 2012 at a hospital in Tripoli, Lebanon, where he used his medical background to treat wounded Syrians. Back then, he was just 24 driven by a burning desire to help. We just get one life and that's it. You get one shot at this. We don't get any do-overs, you know? And like for me, it was, it was time to put up or shut up. The way I saw it, I didn't have a choice. You know, like this is what I was put here to do. I guess I'm just a hopeless romantic and I'm an idealist and I believe in hopeless causes. Shortly afterwards, he launched his own nonprofit, delivering humanitarian aid and medical assistance to Syrians. Kasich was kidnapped by ISIS in October 2013 while on his way to Deir ez-Zor to deliver aid. At some point during his captivity, he converted to Islam, now going by the name Abdul Rahman. There is so much that is beyond our control. We've asked our government to change its actions, but like our son, we have no more control over the U.S. government than you have over the breaking of dawn. We implore his captors to show mercy and use their power to let our son go. On Wednesday, hundreds gathered at his former university, including his parents, to pray for his safe return, but also, as he would have wanted, to shed light on the plight of the Syrian people.